What is going on guys? Happy Monday. Today we're going to be answering a question regarding hyperalbuminemia. And we're going to get right into this question today. This is going to be a short lecture uh, compared to the last video that I put out regarding back pain. If you haven't checked out the last video on acute back pain, we go over etiologies regarding back pain, serious pathology. We go over signs, symptoms, the workup, including imaging, do we need to do any type of laboratory testing, and how we follow up and manage the patient with acute back pain. But today we're gonna to be answering a question regarding possible multiple, uh, multiple myeloma and hyperalbuminemia according to the question here. So let's get into it now. And this comes from a nurse practitioner, and she says, hi Andrew, I'm an NP from Pennsylvania, and after four years of practice, I still struggle with lab interpretation in general. My question today is elevated serum protein. How do I work that up? When do I do SPEP and, and immunofixation or just monitor in a young person versus an old person? Thank you. So these uh, tests that she's discussing here, this immunofixation, the SPEP, um, even UPEP, these are all tests to diagnose multiple myeloma. Now, very quickly, multiple myeloma. Multiple, multiple myeloma is a disease in which your body produces an excess amount of uh, immunoglobulins or antibodies, right? So we have this overproliferation of antibodies, which causes your immune system to be all out of whack, right? It causes immune dysfunction. So patients are at increased risk for having infection. The clinical picture, we can have bone pain, pathological fractures, anemia, fatigue. This is how the patient is going to present. Now, the interesting thing or the thing that a lot of students, clinicians get confused is this protein aspect, right? We have this overproliferation of plasma proteins. This does not mean that the total serum protein is going to be elevated. Total serum protein, for the most part, is going to be albumin, right? Albumin is the main protein when we're looking at the total serum protein in, um, in the laboratory workup when we order a CMP, for example, a comprehensive metabolic panel, and or we're looking for albumin specifically. So when we have hyperalbuminemia, the most common cause here is simply going to be dehydration. So we don't need to worry about working up hyperalbuminemia at all right? We really don't for the most part. Um, patients who have a high protein diet can also present with hyperalbuminemia. And the albumin, the total serum protein, these proteins here are going to be made in the liver. So if we have cirrhosis, for example, this is going to cause a decrease in protein, right? We're going to have hypoalbuminemia. And other things that can cause hypoalbuminemia are things like nephrotic syndrome. Um, these are the patients that we do want to work up, right? So if we have hypoalbuminemia, this could be malnutrition, this could be cirrhosis, this could be, um, like we said, nephrotic syndrome, renal failure, things of that nature. So this we want to pay a little bit more attention to, but multiple myeloma, uh, as this uh, a nurse practitioner here is referring to, the average age of onset is going to be about seven years of age, so it's the older patient. And like we said, uh, they're going to present with um, other things, right? The, the protein that we're discussing here is not albumin, and, and actually, interestingly enough, Patients with multiple myeloma, um, prognosis-wise, actually have a worse prognosis in patients who have hypoalbuminemia, right? And other things that we might see on laboratory testing are going to be hypercalcemia that can present in um, multiple myeloma. We can have a normal, a nor sorry, a normocytic normochromic anemia. So other things we're looking for, right? And then we could do UPEP, SPEP if we're actually going down that path. But hyperalbuminemia, most common cause, dehydration, maybe high protein diet, nothing really to worry about if everything else is fine and the patient is asymptomatic. Also, don't be, um, and that's it. That's, that's, all, that's really all I want to get across today. So hopefully this was clear. Hopefully this helps you. Um, if you guys have any questions whatsoever, more than happy to answer, more than happy to help however I can. You can either go ahead and DM me directly on my personal Instagram, which is A-N-D underscore R-E-I-D, or the PA Board's Instagram, which is simply P-A-B-O-A-R-D-S. Or as always, you can send me an email, Andrea Physician Assistant Boards com. Very happy to be doing these YouTube videos. Very happy to getting all the survey responses that I've been getting. Hundreds and hundreds of people have responded. So that's incredibly useful for, um, for how we take the YouTube, how we take the podcast. If you haven't already done so, it's simply physicianassistantboards.com forward slash survey. Three questions, less than a minute, and this will help guide the way we do these videos and these uh, podcasts. Thank you so much, guys. Appreciate you, and I'll check you guys on the next lecture. Take care. Bye.